Let me let me ask you about your, your view of how things have been going today. I mean, there's been a lot uh, in the past several years with the riots of the country uh, for, over George Floyd. I'm curious as to your perspective. You're older than us, and so you certainly have seen way more. Does it feel worse today in terms of the political divide than it has in the past? I wouldn't say that it really feels worse. You know, there's always been a divide, but people today are more outspoken and less uh, hidden about their views. There, there seems to be a more um, emboldening, if you will, today. Like, you know, you see people who used to wear um, hoods and masks uh, come out there with their uh, burning crosses, and now they come out in their regular clothes and express the same views. So they don't feel like, you know, they have to hide so much anymore uh, because their jobs are being threatened or whatever. When did you, so let's, let, we, we can just get started with your story for people who aren't familiar. Do you want to, you, so just in, in terms of the context, I'd love, to, I want to talk about modern politics and all this stuff and where we are now, but I think your history might lend some uh, understanding to a lot of people. How did you, you're, you're famous for being the, how did you describe it? The, um, you inspired people to uh, um, de-radicalize the Klan's members. Okay, so to, so to give you a little bit of background on myself, as I said, I was, I'm 64 years old. But I grew up as the child of parents in the U.S. Foreign Service. So I grew up as an American embassy brat. I, I was born in 58. I began traveling around the world at the age of, six, of, of, uh, of three in 1961. And uh, how it works is you, you get assigned to a country for two years. You come back here to the States. You're here for a few months, maybe a year. And then you're assigned to another country abroad. So my first exposure to school was overseas. I, I, I did kindergarten, first grade, third grade, fifth grade, seventh grade, and all the schools I went to overseas, this is back in the 1960s. My classmates were from Nigeria, Japan, Russia, Czechoslovakia, Germany, France, Italy, Sweden. Anybody who had an embassy in those particular countries, all of their kids went to the same school. So that became my baseline as to what school was supposed to be about. I had all these colors. You guys here, are too young to remember black and white TV, but you know about it. I remember black and white TV, and I remember when color TV came in. It was like, wow, it's like a whole new dimension, right? You know, you never want to see black and white TV again. You saw something in living color. Okay, well, every time I would come back home from overseas back to my own country, the United States, it was like going from color TV to black and white, you know, because we did not have that amount of diversity in this country. In, in our schools. When I would come back, I would either be in all black schools or black and white schools, meaning the still segregated or the newly integrated. Just because uh, Brown versus the Board of Education desegregated schools in 1954, it didn't mean that integration took place overnight. It took years and years. But even in, in, in many cases, still, it's not. A exactly. I'm, I'm... In fact, the uh, uh, Prince Edward County, Virginia, shut down. They refused to integrate schools. Wow. The public schools. They shut down all public schools in Prince Edward County, Virginia, not for five days, not for five weeks, not for five months, for five years. Years. Okay? Imagine how much education is lost in five years. When you go down there today, people my age, a lot of them are basically functional illiterates because they wow. missed five years of their education. If you know, if they were in third grade, you know, they didn't go back to school until they were in eighth grade. You know, you know that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, you're, you're dealing with that kind of thing. So look, look, look at kids today who have to go to school over Zoom over the last two years because of the pandemic. Some, some kids did better than others, but a lot, of, a lot of them did not do so well over Zoom because they weren't getting that personal one-on-one -on -one education. You know? Well, as, as, as an aside, too, I don't want to derail, derail too much. I, I think we're going to start seeing something similar because schools have started adopting ideological praxis in their teachings. Mm -hmm. So instead of telling a kid, you know, two plus two equals four, they're saying two plus two equals five. Well, in what context are we talking? So you actually had a viral trend where people, teachers, were saying two plus two equals five. Because in what context? It, it was that 2.4 plus 2.4 equals 4.8, which is rounded up to 5. So if you round down 2.4, I don't know what kind of simplicity mess this they were intending. But it was, it was, it's an issue of tribalism. And this is, this is, it's part of the polarization. The idea is that the people on the right started saying 2 plus 2 is 4. And sooner or later, the woke people are going to say it's not. 
And then a point was being made by, you know, left tribal people where they're like two plus two could be five. Here's how. And then they say 2.4 rounds down to two. But 2.4 plus 2.4 is 4.8, which rounds to five. Therefore, two plus two is five. And then most people who are reasonable are just like 2.4 plus 2.4 is 4.8. End of story. If you want to make some weird equation that omits information for the sake of making your, your strange argument, I guess. But they're teaching kids this. You also have a lot of the critical race theory ideology stuff in schools where the kids are getting more of this kind of social emotional learning as opposed to actually learning stuff. Okay, so let's let, let's define two terms that you use just just yeah. so that everybody's on the same page, not just us here, but but everybody out here listening to us. So let's 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 define the term woke. Your your definition of term woke and your definition of the term critical race theory. Woke is typically a reference to like a a left tribal identifier. So it has a reference to critical race theory, critical theory, critical gender theory. It encompasses these different schools of thought. We got we to gotta define all these things. Critical race theory is um, basically the, int- the oh man, this getting, it gets tough to actually, is that a stink bug? Critical race theory is critical theory in a racial context. Critical theory is the, the political theory of the oppressed versus the oppressors. With Karl Marx back in the day, crit- his critical theory was that the wealthy oppress the poor, the poor, the proletariat is oppressed. The bourgeoisie oppresses. Kimberly Crenshaw wrote a book called Critical Race Theory, which says this doesn't take into context the race, the racial component of the United States. Therefore, critical race theory is white people are dominant and they oppress all people of color. So critical race theory has several different subsequent schools of thought like intersectionality, that a uh, black woman experiences different discrimination than a black man because there's also sexism plus racism. But the sexism plus racism is a different category than the sexism that a white woman would experience. So this is another school of thought within the realm of critical race theory. Critical race praxis is the implementation of these ideas into standardized learning. An example would be, if I were to give you a math problem, I would say a train leaves Pittsburgh traveling at 100 miles an hour. A train leaves Cincinnati traveling at 75 miles an hour. They're 300 miles apart. How long? Blah, blah, blah. Critical race praxis gives math problems to kids, like in Florida. Jerome was stopped by the police 17 times in the past month. Harold was stopped three times. What percentage are black people stopped by police more than white people? So what they're doing is, it is a math question, but they're injecting an ideology, a praxis of critical race theory. Assuming that Jerome is black. Well, they, they, they do these things that are overtly racist. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And but it'll show a little black character and it'll show a little white character and then they'll they'll do this problem. And so we've started seeing the emergence of a lot of that. What I see from this is uh, one viral video that went around is a kid who didn't understand pronouns because this is an, an, wokeness includes what is crit, what is called critical gender theory, which is boys and girls don't exist. Doctors guess gender. And so there's a video of a little boy asking, uh, he, he, he's doing a pronoun worksheet. And it says something like, Juan gets on the swing. Which pronoun would you use? Janet uses jump ropes. Which pronouns would you use? And he put they for all of them. And his mom goes, why did you put they for all of them? And he says, how am I supposed to know if they're boys or girls? And she said, didn't you notice their names? And he was like, but you said there's no boys or girls in names. And so now the kids don't understand basic English grammar because of these of the praxis being injected in 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 our you know in the current generation the current learning systems so not to derail too much from what you were saying because now we're getting particularly verbose uh when you talk about these schools the first thing i think of is at this point schools have become so corrupt in many ways i think regardless of whether we have them or not people are going to become functionally illiterate basically when you mentioned functional illiterates i thought of the kid who didn't know how to use pronouns and everything that comprises that problem we're experiencing. Assuming that that uh, he doesn't uh, know that Janet is a female name, or now it's uh, androgynous, right? Where it, Janet could be a male name or a female name. Like, for example, my name is Daryl. Uh, for the longest time, I thought Daryl was always a male name until an actress came along named Daryl Hannah. That's right. <laughs> well, so uh, so that defines wokeness. Was there another another term? No, that was a wokeness and a critical race theory. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. I think the impossible thing about it is that everything is blended together. And so every issue becomes inter- with intersectionality. The, like, the reality is that 
if you're talking about race, you're talking race and gender are different conversations, but yet they're the same conversation. And so it makes it it makes it really hard to to talk about anything because so de- woke blends all of that together. Yep. And it, it's just it, that's it's hard to define because it me- it also means different things to different people. I think I could define wokeness as like it's like a faux awakening. People feel like they're having an awakening right now. And but it's it's an awakening to like what they're being told is 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 real. So they just believe what they're told. Rather well, than a real like central awakening of like having like a reality shift or, so, or a, you know what I mean? It's not like a, like an internal struggling. I mean, maybe it is for them. They're probably having a similar feeling to someone that's actually had a spiritual awakening on a hill meditating for 40 days, but it's like a, fa- a false awakening and people are making fun of it, calling it, oh, they're woke. They're so awake now. Have you ever heard the term red pilled? Red build? Red pilled. No. It's the inverse of woke, but they basically mean the same thing. Okay. If you are red pill, it's a reference to the matrix. You get the blue pill, the red pill. The red pill wakes you up from the illusion of reality. Woke means you've awoken to what's really going on. And so they mean effectively the same thing, a great realization of the lies you've been told. Based on my understanding and I think a fair research, Red pilled is a bit trolly and more tongue in cheek. Woke is zealous and, and ideological, but I also think the woke stuff is manipulative and wrong for the most part. So you know we often have people on here, and I talk. Well, about- okay, so so for example, uh, when I was in high school, uh, we were taught in, in the textbooks. I still got my textbooks that uh, that Robert uh, uh, Perry, uh, Admiral Perry, uh, discovered the um, the North Pole. Not true. You know, uh, Matthew Henson discovered the North Pole. Admiral Perry was a white guy. Matthew Henson was a black guy. Matthew Henson was Admiral Perry's best friend. And they went on the exploration together. Okay, Perry got sick and told Henson to go on. Henson went on and discovered the North Pole. All right. Interesting. When uh, they got back, Perry told everybody it was Henson. They said, no, we can't give him the credit. And they gave the credit to Admiral Perry. All right. Admiral Perry was buried in Arlington Cemetery. Matthew Henson was buried in a pauper's grave. Uh, in the 1980s, when uh, Ronald Reagan was, uh, was in office as president, uh, there was a, a, a bill put forth. Uh, Coretta Scott King and some other people came to him. And <clears throat> he uh, passed this bill. Now in the textbooks, it says Matthew Henson discovered the North Pole. Now, I knew that all along because my parents told me, even though it wasn't in the textbook. All right. Um, they exhumed Matthew Henson from the pauper's grave, grave, and now he's buried next to his best friend, uh, Admiral Perry, in Arlington Cemetery. When I was in school, uh, we did not learn that this country had internment camps for Japanese Americans. I didn't learn that until I was in college, and I was incredulous. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? No way. And I asked my parents, and they are like, yeah. You know why wasn't it in, why wasn't it in our textbooks? Because it was a it was a dark blemish on our history. It was a shameful thing that we did in this country. So did I become woke when I was in college? But that's not what wokeness. Is, all right. What, so what is woke, that? So uh, an example of wokeness is saying things like all white people are racist. All all white people are not racist. But that's wokeness is not a reference to understanding how history works. So I'll, I'll give you an example. When I was a little kid, uh, I was told in school, Christopher Columbus discovered America, which is just not true. Right. They were already people here. But did you know that? Yes, because okay. I had uh, I had a mom who told me there were already people here. Right. And my, I, I tell the story all the time. She said, actually, Leif Erikson came to the, to the uh, North American continent a thousand before. years before Christopher Columbus. But honey, there were already people there, weren't there? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, did they teach you there were already people there? And I was like, yes. And she goes, didn't they discover this <laughs> continent? And I was like, yeah. I was like, then why did they tell me that? And she said, they think you're stupid, but they'll tell you the truth in college. And that was like a real anti-authoritarian moment for me as a kid. So, I repeat- so was that an awakening or, or a woke? So wokeness doesn't refer to learning the truth. Wokeness is typically, I mean, depending on who you're talking to. Right. If you're talking to people who are trying to avoid the overt ideologies of either you know extremists, any, any extremist faction, Wokeness is typically a pejorative term to reference someone who says, you're white, so you're racist. That's considered to be woke. Now, some people might use woke in a more lax manner, like perhaps towards the angle you're describing it. But uh, 
based on the, like this show and how we, we approach things, most people who watch would probably say they're anti-woke, but they completely agree with what you've said or would completely agree with the idea that Native Americans already were here. Right. The, the proper way to describe it is Christopher Columbus discovered uh, the Bahamas for Europeans. As, as part of the European culture, he was the first to kind of bring that information to them. But again, Leif Erikson, also of European descent, discovered it. It didn't really make the rounds in the European continent. And other people were already here who had discovered the land. Typically, okay. typically people do not use woke as like a badge. You know, people who support even, even critical even woke people, people don't. No, say they it. don't. They yeah. don't. And so so people who are like pro critical race theory wouldn't necessarily call themselves that. And I think, look, most people are pro uncensored history. I think that yeah. is a common thing that we need to get on the no, table. No, I, well, I, I would have to disagree with well, that. Well, maybe I don't. I'm, I'm. I don't have a statistic in front of me, but I think we all here want well, so un, uncensored history, th th and I. It, so it, mm. it gets complicated because critical race theory. Some people are trying to say that critical race theory is the truth of history. That's some people's perspective. Other people would agree with teaching what you just said was omitted. Right. But that wouldn't. That that's not the same as critical race theory. So take a look at this image. This is part of a book called Not My Idea, in which grade school children are shown the whiteness contract with a white hand reaching out and a devil tail and goat's feet. I think this is wrong to teach children that white people are inherently evil, inherently oppressors, or inherently racist, that all white people are racist. And this is what woke typically means when we criticize it. I think... Uh, we should tell people that uh, some people are good, some people are bad, and race is not relevant to whether or not someone will be a good or bad person. You've got to find out who they are within. Would you agree? I would agree 100% with that. Well, the problem is, this is what they're teaching kids in school. Dude, we can see your pointy tail. Contract binding you to whiteness. You get stolen land, stolen riches, special favors. Whiteness gets to mess endlessly with the lives of your friends, neighbors, loved ones, and fellow humans of color. Sign below for the purpose of profit. Land, riches, and favors may be revoked at any time for any reason. Showing a white hand reaching out with a whiteness contract and devil's tail, I think is particularly dangerous to be teaching children. Okay, but now, so that's called critical race theory by your definition, correct? Yes. Okay, but there are also people who are calling critical race theory teaching the transparent history. Okay, people people banning books. Uh, no, no, not, these, not not talking about these are the books being banned. Would those you, are, those are not the only books being banned, right? They're they're, so, they're, they're talk, talk, talking about banning books on Rosa Parks biography out of schools. Not talking about slavery. Not talking about you know oppression and things like that. They're calling that critical race well, theory as well. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at eight p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.